Vita. Browns training camp continues, and we're with Browns general manager John Dorsey, who was with me in the broadcast booth on Saturday at the Orange and Brown scrimmage at First Energy Stadium. That was very exciting. We were both very, very excited about the amount of people who were who were in there, now numbering 38,000. It was awesome. It, it, was, uh, it was a beautiful day. It was a great segue to take the four to six um, position there in terms of the time slot. I thought that the energy level from the from the fans was incredible. I think the, it was like the young players first experience to see what the Cleveland Browns were all about from a fan base perspective. And you could see the energy level pick up at practice. I mean, it was awesome. And then you look at the job that Chris Powell and his, uh, from your vantage point up there that high, look at that yeah. field. It was in great shape. Yeah. You know, and the, the thing about the field, I have to tell you, because it, they keep that field really good all year long. They really I mean, do. you know, as the old stadium, you remember, used to be painted green. Yes. By the time Thanksgiving would come around. But this stadium's really amazing. And I know some of the some of the newer stadiums have had problems sometimes with their field, but they do an amazing job here. And they really do. And, you know, if you really look at how the, the grass held up last year yeah, in the right. 2018 season, it was phenomenal. Yeah. And that that's a credit to Chris and his staff. Yeah. So everything was good down at the stadium. And as you said, the uh, the energy was great. The energy outside the stadium was, was game day-like. It really was. You can only imagine now what it will be like Thursday night. And then building up to that opening game against Tennessee. And it should be fun. And that's, you know, that's why we're in this training camp. Now we're in the day 10 of the training camp uh, mode. And guys are starting to come together as one. You know, you can see it's, it, it's been really good. Freddie's uh, and the coaching staff have done a great job of putting them in stressful situations. Mm -hmm. and, and that's good because, you know, sometimes the offense wins, sometimes the defense right. wins. But now all of a sudden you get into Thursday's uh, game against the Washington Redskins, and now you're going to get a lot of young guys, get a lot of reps and a lot of looks. And this organization want, will begin to make those hard assessments uh, for the next four weeks to – formulate that 53 at the end of the day and I would assume those will be hard they decisions. will be hard it, it really is and to me it's probably one of the hardest moments um, yeah. during the year because you have virtually anywhere let's say 35 to 40 guys that have basically given all of their sweat equity and they've done everything they can and at the end of the day you're that guy that tells that player you know you know what it's not going to work out here maybe somewhere else and that's hard because You've developed a relationship. Mm -hmm. the, you know, the organization developed a relationship with the players. They've come together in the bonding fashion. You hear about the chemistry we yeah. always talk about. And the one thing I admire about this group in this locker room is they kind of they genuinely like each other. They like being around each other. And that's good for team chemistry. I, I really believe so. Do you think that started last year when things turned and they started to be successful together and they started to win big games, and they came with regularity. I do, and uh, and just to listen to them talk uh, all the way back in March and April about they used the term unfinished business. Yeah. And I like that because they remember uh, the end there, and now they have higher expectations, and rightfully so. They should have higher expectations because at, at the end of the day now, uh, you're going to have, you know, a unified group that's going to set those goals for themselves and set those standards high. And once you have a group of young men that has one goal, one purpose, and one drive, you'll be able to forge through some of those difficult times mm -hmm. that will occur during the season. Um, I guess you build toughness on a foot. You have to build toughness on a football team. It's, it's an ingredient that's a necessity. And I'm watching this training camp, and as you said, there are stressful times being created periods being created where you're tested and you're tested in pads and you're tested with a lot of physical play and that's how you get there right 100 percent. and i think uh, freddie and his staff have done a really good job of making it a little bit physical i mean there's a period or two every day he's going to have a physical period it's still the game of football you have to callous the body a little bit to get ready to play the game yeah. of football but also he's challenging them mentally in there too because that execution uh, is so vitally important from an offensive perspective. The timing and the execution is very important. And then on the defensive side of the ball, you have, you have Coach Wilkes. And, I mean, he is just challenging yeah. those guys yeah. day in and day out, mentally and physically. Yeah. And that's, you know, guys, they're okay with that. Yeah. 
they have been fun to watch. On Thursday night, what will you be looking at? Is it an overview? Uh, do you focus in on some of the key position battles that uh, you know will play out now in these games? Yeah, I, I'll do that, and then I'll look. To, I'll watch the rotation of how how we're beginning to to use our substitutions mm -hmm. of players and how playing time is going to get allotted. But there will be certain uh, positions that I'll be focused on. Um, you want to see how everybody, be, you know, and then as, you know, I look at the second half too, I think that's going to be very important from my perspective in terms of true evaluation and then how guys are playing on special teams because yeah. that's another component of the game that sometimes we don't talk about enough and I think special teams is right. a very important component to talk about. Um, you mentioned, and you've mentioned it a couple of times, that when you talk about Baker Mayfield coming into his second season and maybe any player going from his first to second season, you look for a 20 to 25 percent improvement, and right? that's natural. Yeah. So tell me spe specifically for a quarterback or for him specifically, what would that be? Well, I would think that for offensively, uh, early on as a rookie, he probably had this huge play in his head. Yeah. And then all of a sudden he's got to digest that. He's got to spit it out. Then he's got to know the alignment of, okay, where's the X, where's the Z, where's the Y, who am I going to and, you know, in, right now on these plays. Hopefully that's intuitively enough been ingrained in him to where now he already knows, okay, this is the play and this is what's going to transpire. But now as he walks up to the, the offensive line, what he's going to look at is now he begins to read coverages. Yeah. And once, he be able, once he's able to disseminate what the coverage is, he'll already be able to filter and go, you know what, let's process it real quick. One, two, three, those are my options. Boom, I know where I'm going. And those are the, the growing things that you look for because that quarterback position is really hard to master and very rarely, I mean, but, you know, I've always said he, he does such a great job of understanding certain concepts of football because I believe he is mature beyond his age. And, and that helps him of, of understanding what's, what's required. And then now he is a sponge when it comes to just yeah. learning information, which is really uh, good. You have put, he has a great support system around him. He's got Freddie. He's got Todd Munkin now here. He has Ryan Lindley with him now. He has Drew Stanton, who's with him right now. He's got a guy that he had, you know, that kind of grew up with him in, in Garrett Gilbert, who went to the same high school, right, and played there. But he's got a great, he's got a great offensive line of, of veterans like Treader, Batonio, those kind of Correct. people around him. And, you know, that's a lot around him. But that's good, though. I mean, no, yeah, and it really helps him. But you know what, though, it all starts in that quarterback room, and, and there is a, you know, you got to have a really solid quarterback room, and and you just named some names there that they all work and they genuinely like each other. Uh, I think the offensive line really respects who he is mm -hmm. uh, as a man and as a player and as a teammate, and. That's what you want within your that's, – that's what we talk about. They genuinely like being around each other. And, you know, sometimes he's going to challenge the guys, but the quarterbacks can do that. Yeah. And sometimes he's going to pat them on, you know, pat yeah. them on the fanny and move on. But um, That's the mature beyond his years, don't you think? I do. Yeah. I do. Yeah. I really do. Um, I got, I've never asked you about this player who is one of my favorite players, Nick Chubb. He is I – I, and I mean this affectionately. He's an old soul, I think. He is a, he's like a throwback guy. I love him. I love the way he plays. I love the way he gets up after a run. Jim Brown, like, flips the ball. I, there's everything about him. What, you know how you said, boy, when I saw Baker Mayfield, I really locked on to him and what happened at Oklahoma and how the players around him reacted to him. But tell me about when you really got attracted to the way Nick Chubb played. First off, Nick Chubb is the consummate professional, Oof, wow. and that's big because yeah. he comes, he understands exactly what the task is at hand. Uh, football is very important to him. He loves the competitive environment of it. He's a great teammate. Yeah. But then when you begin to really watch him play the game of football, you begin to see what a dominant inside the tackle runner he was in college. I mean, some people, they tend to forget that I think this man was the second all-time leading rusher in the SEC. And that's pretty good yeah. when you can be the second all-time leading rusher in the SEC. It's vibes. He just, his approach to the game is guys like me, I have total admir admiration and respect for guys 
of his approach to the game of football because you know what? It means something to him. Yeah. He will never leave an ounce of effort on that. You know, he'll never leave it. Um, he'll, the tank will always be run yeah. down when he gets off the, out of the game. He gave a great answer today, so I'm going to tell you about it. Um, he, you know, he had the thousand yards in Baltimore a couple of times, and then you know, the Ravens are good defense and hit him a couple of times behind the line. He lost the thousand yards by a tick. Uh, and the, someone asked him, do, do you lament that? And he goes, no, I don't lament that at all. I lament my first run of the year against the Steelers when I didn't hit it the right way. I found that to be amazing, and that's Nick Chubb. I mean, you know. He's trying to get better at yeah, his every, Early every on, carry. if you watched him early on, he was dancing a little bit in preseason. I remember, Freddie, I remember Freddie one time after the game against the Giants said, said to him uh, after the game said, he's just got to get his eyes right in the right, split, in the right spot. I think that's what you're alluding to. Right? Exactly. And he's got them right. He now knows the holes to pick, and um, he's just a joy to be around, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy he's a Cleveland Brown. Last question. Uh, you, you have to be excited by what you're watching and what you've built. Well, you know what? It's those guys on the field. That's who the Cleveland Browns really are. And now what they have to go show uh, the organization, the greater Cleveland area, you know what? They're real. And there's only one way of being real, and that's actions and not words. And it's those actions on the field that's the only thing that matters. It's kind of like the action I took today. You know, my son Jack is eight years old. He just started this football card collection thing. And he went in my box and he found this one football card. Look at this. And there was only one of them left. And it's Doug Deacon, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Look at it. It's Doug Deacon. And we got him to autograph it today, by the way. You know Doug Deacon? I do. And I'll tell you what, you made his day. <laughs> and Jack's. Oh, okay. and Jack. No, I'm taking Jack. this home because Jack goes, Daddy, how, much, how valuable you think that is? Oh. I don't have the heart to tell Deacon. It's only worth about 20 cents. <laughs> And on that note, we'll say, see you Thursday night. See you Thursday. Thanks. <laughs> great job. Great job. That's great, man. My Thank man. Thank you. Appreciate it. Did you get a close-up of that? Yeah, I want to get a close-up of that real quick. <laughs> I tell you, we'll put it right back. We can hold it right there. Perfect.